annual accumulation is a permanent bound set of volumes. The SCI is a calendar year index. This means that every issue of every journal indexed in the SCI system is completely indexed by the end of the year. For example, all 52 weekly issues of journals such as Nature, Science, JAMA, and Physical Review will be comprehensively indexed. Similarly, 99% of every quarterly SCI is current and complete. By contrast, in traditional abstracting services, the year of coverage is the date of the abstracts rather than the publication's index. Another of the SCI indexes is the uh, SCI corporate index, which provides a function comparable to the source index. In this index, however, it is possible to determine for any uh, given organization what articles have been published by members of its staff for that calendar year. For example, here's a list of publications by the members of the staff of Michigan State University. While the author and corporate approach is frequently used to identify subject matter, the most widely used method is by word indexing. In fact, most people assume that all subject indexes are word indexes. As will be seen later, this is not necessarily the case. However, in the SCI system, the subject word approach is provided by the permuterm index. The permuterm concept was invented at ISI. It is automatic indexing by computer augmented by man-machine edits. Thus, for each article index, the computer uh, selects each significant word and then creates all possible permutations of term pairs. This means that in the average article, which contains about seven significant words, about 35 permuted pairs will be created. For example, in this article on pink discoloration in Italian varieties of cheese, the computer has created all of these permuted pairs. Thus, when using the permuter term index, the searcher will be able to find the article no matter which of these permuted pair headings he uses. The permuter term index is an alphabetically arranged word index and is quite easy to use. Suppose one is interested in literature on the effect of age on female behavior. You can begin the search under age, female, or behavior. The primary entry, female, is followed by the code term entries for age and behavior, which also appear in alphabetical order as subheadings. An article by Diamond has in fact appeared on this topic. Using the author's name and the ISI code number, the title is identified in the source index as Effective Age on Female Sexual Behavior in the Guinea Pig. The primary term index will be useful for finding known articles even when the author's name has been forgotten and will also be able to be used in finding other key articles on that same topic. The primary term index is of course based on natural language, that is the current terminology used by authors in their articles. By Humpty Dumpty and Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass, when a professional indexer uses a subject heading, he is really saying when I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. This often leads to difficulty. While word indexes of all kinds have an important place in the literature retrieval process, scientists have long recognized their basic shortcomings. Over 10 years ago, ISI began an investigation of the system of citation indexing. Long experience has shown that citation indexing overcomes the many inherent limitations of word indexes and provides in-depth subject indexing not found in any of these other systems. Unquestionably, therefore, the most important section of the Science Citation Index system is the citation index. In contrast to the source index, the citation index is definitely not an author index. The citation index tells you for any given article or book, 
regardless when or where it was published, where that publication was cited. For important reasons, the citation index is arranged by the author of the cited publication, as will be shown in several examples. Suppose you are interested in finding articles in recent literature on the application of the diffusion equation, first discussed in 1906 by Albert Einstein in the German journal Annalen der Physik. Now, in order to find this information, one simply looks in the citation index for the name Einstein. Each of these dotted lines represents a different article by Einstein that has been cited in 1966. But here is the condensed citation for his 1906 paper on the diffusion equation. Listed right directly below, you see a dozen papers published in 1966 which refer to this paper by Einstein. Thus, it should be noted that in the Science Citation Index, all cited works are listed regardless of their age. This paper by Einstein was published over 60 years ago. The complete identifications for the citing items will be found in the source index. One finds, among others, this paper on the rheological properties of ice cream, published in the Journal of Food Science. On the other hand, one also finds a paper on ribonucleic acid from the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Examine this list of papers. It would scarcely be apparent, even to the most sophisticated indexer, that these articles concern the topic in this search. Yet my secretary was able to perform this search using the SCI in a few minutes, a search which is impossible by any other indexing system available. Whenever I discuss the Science Citation Index, I am inevitably asked, how can one search by subject? The Citation Index is indeed a subject index, but it does not employ the symbols used in traditional indexes. In the Citation Index, the symbols used for subjects are citations. The index term is an earlier cited paper and the document retrieved is the current citing paper. Let me digress for a moment. Here we have drawn a symbol for a concept that is known to almost any person in the world. Here is another symbol for that same concept, the ampersand. Now, most people do not think of words as symbols, but of course they are. The word and is also a symbol for the same concept. It makes no difference which of these symbols I use. The concept is defined. In the same way, literature citations are also symbols for subject matter. Consider the subject, lifelike forms and meteorites, as discussed by Harold Urey in 1962 in Science. In the citation index system, this subject is represented by this symbol, H.C. Urey, Science, 137, 623, 1962. And whenever you wish to search this specific topic, look for this symbol in the citation index. If anything has been published subsequently, it will be listed there. Indeed, in the 1965 citation index under Yuri H.C., we find many of his publications cited, and in particular, our starting reference. Right below is the entry G. Muller, Nature, 1965, volume 205, page 1200. And in the source index, we find it is a paper by Muller on interpretations of microstructures and carbonaceous meteorites. Thus, it was possible, by a very routine search, to find relevant information on this topic, even though the terminology used by Muller and Urey is not exactly the same. Consider an example from a different field. Suppose that we would like to compile a rather comprehensive bibliography of recent papers on the topic absorbance and emission spectra of aromatic compounds in solid solution in rare gas crystals, a subject on which it turns out there is quite a bit of literature. A knowledgeable person in this field would ordinarily have a list of older starting references, which he could obtain from his reprint collection or by a variety of other methods. 
perhaps a search in the Permuterm Index, or in chemical abstracts, or physics abstracts. Having obtained this list of starting references, he could enter the SCI with one or more of these and proceed as I did before. However, let us assume that the only paper that he has at hand is a paper he found recently by scanning current contents. Thus, a paper by Diamant concerning the near ultraviolet spectra of benzene in inert solid solutions 